So Gina Carano filed a lawsuit against Disney and Lucasfilm and is being financed by Phony Stark. Welcome to 2024. Well, there's no reason to bury the lead. Gina Carano filed a lawsuit against her former employer nearly three years after being fired by Disney for comments she made online comparing critics of anti-vaxxers and conservatives to Nazis. Here's the comment that got her canned. Quote, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them for simply being Jews. How is that different from hating someone for their political views? Like I said at the time, it isn't. It's the same thing. And no, the irony of Carano's supporters behaving in the very way she criticized isn't lost on me. Now, I've read several articles about the lawsuit, and they all conveniently left out everything leading up to Carano's 2021 comment, specifically that at least once a week, fire Gina Carano would trend on Twitter because she posted some right-wing comments the Wakandans didn't like. My opinions on this matter haven't changed. I don't think she wrote anything all that bad. These were mild clapbacks at best. Was she trolling people by putting beep bop boop as her pronouns in her bio? Yes. Could someone consider that transphobic? Yes. Is it the biggest thing in the world? No. And people should keep in mind why she did it. Because these clowns were demanding that she put her pronouns in her bio as if it weren't clear that she wanted to be referred to as female. This was about control. She wouldn't do what she was told, so the Twitterati pitched a fit. She trolled them. They got mad and kept whining until they got what they wanted. Disney eventually firing Karana. That brings us to Karana's lawsuit, which has this idiotic gem of an introduction. Quote, a short time ago in a galaxy not so far away, defendants made it clear that only one orthodoxy in thought, speech, or action was acceptable in their empire, and that those who dare to question or fail to fully comply would not be tolerated. And so it was with Karana. After two highly acclaimed seasons on The Mandalorian as rebel Cara Dune, Karana was terminated from her role as swiftly as her character's peaceful home of Alderaan had been destroyed by the Death Star. And all this because she dared to voice her own opinions on social media platforms and elsewhere and stood up to the online bully mob who demanded her compliance with their extreme progressive ideology. This is what happens when you let wannabe screenwriter Ben Shapiro write your intro. Just stop. You don't want people laughing their asses off right from the start. Now, the situation with Corrado's lawsuit is interesting because while California law does protect employees from being compelled to participate in political activities and being punished or threatened for expressing political views, there's nothing preventing an employer from banning harassment or discrimination by their employees in their code of conduct. So, if Disney considers Corrado's comments to be harassment and discrimination, they are technically within their right to fire her. That seems to be where the issue lies. From The Hollywood Reporter, quote, In a statement clarifying the post on X, Carano on Tuesday said, My words were consistently twisted to demonize and dehumanize me as an alt-right-wing extremist. According to the complaint, Disney and Lucasfilm harassed and defamed Carano for refusing to conform to their viewpoints on issues relating to Black Lives Matter, preferred pronouns, and disproving claims of election interference. While she was allegedly fired for her cultural and religious beliefs, Carano argues that the entertainment giant turned a blind eye to her male co-stars, who allegedly made offensive and denigrating posts directed toward Republicans. She points to Pedro Pascal's 2017 post comparing former President Donald Trump to Hitler. Two points. One, that's really not the same thing. Trump is a public figure, so you get more leeway with making those kinds of claims as opposed to calling random people Nazis. Two, cultural and religious beliefs don't grant legal protection from accusations of harassment and discrimination. You can't target people and then go, it's okay because it's my religion. You don't get to do that no matter how much you genuinely believe in your kooky ass woo. I don't think either of those two arguments are going to get Carano very far. I do think she has a case with this, quote, Carano also alleges Disney engaged in a post-termination smear campaign, citing the abrupt removal of an episode of Running Wild with Bear Grylls in which she appeared from the show's scheduled lineup in an effort to malign her. Though the episode eventually aired, Disney allegedly omitted any mention of her name and likeness in promotional materials. This also follows Disney's statement at the time, where they said that Carano's, quote, 
Social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. That's literally not what she did. And that could constitute libel given that following the release of that statement and Carano's firing, Carano was dropped by her agency and transactional lawyer. Since then, she hasn't appeared in any mainstream Hollywood production. Instead, she's only had parts in Daily Wire films. It would appear she's been blacklisted, whether it's because of her politics or wanting to avoid any drama that might follow her. Without information about what offers have come her way or how she's been treated when she's reached out for parts, that's hard to confirm. But it does give the appearance of it, certainly enough to justify the lawsuit. However, there's another problem with the suit, and no, it's not phony Stark back in it. That's just funny. You'd think that with Teslas literally trying to kill their drivers, and anyone near the cars, and the $56 billion Tesla pay package getting voided, Elon would have bigger problems to worry about than Carano's lawsuit. But then again, it's not like Carano's asking for much. Quote, Carano brings claims for wrongful discharge and sex discrimination. She seeks a court order that would force Lucasfilm to recast her at at least $75,000 plus punitive damages. I checked six different articles. That is the correct amount. $75,000. Why don't you just ask them for a quarter? Disney is a $180 billion company. They have made $75,000, lost it, tripled it, lost that, and quintupled it in the time it took me to say that sentence. $75,000? When Gina shows up at court, Disney's lawyers are just going to hand it to her in a briefcase. That's what they have on them all the time. It's barely pocket change. All you want is $75,000. You don't want to add another zero? Hell, I can give you $75,000. That'd be all my money, but still. Now, she does add in that she'd like to be compensated for the Raider show that got canned. But I don't even know how that would work, because unless the show was in production and filming, there's no guarantee the show would be made. So I don't think that that would fly. And I know for certain that Disney's lawyers would shut that down because there'd be a lot of other actors filing suits for shelf shows if that went through. I also don't understand the idea of wanting to be recast. Why would you want to work for a company that doesn't want to work with you? Also, unless there's something in the decision that prevents Disney from doing so, all Disney is going to do is kill off her character in the first episode. There's really no point in being recast as Cara Dune. But seriously, if all she's asking for is $75,000, it would be nothing for Disney to cut her a check and send her on her way. Assuming the suit doesn't get tossed out of court, Disney will probably settle, and the amount they'd give her wouldn't even be worth including as a tax write-off. Now, it wouldn't be me if I didn't mention that there were also plenty of people convinced that this is owning Disney, or that the company is scared, or that this is a pendulum swinging the other way. The first two, it's not even close. Disney doesn't care. The last one, that remains to be seen. Just because Carano filed the lawsuit doesn't mean that the far left running Hollywood are suddenly going to lose their jobs or their power. There's also the chance that this gets tossed out of court as a frivolous lawsuit. It's not impossible for Carano to prove her case, but given the time that's passed since her firing and that she has found work, even if it was from the Daily Wire, that could work against her claim. If it does go to trial, Disney will try to settle. That's just how the company works. As for Carano taking a stand, I think it's weird that she waited three years, but fine, go ahead. She's free to stand her ground. As for the people cheering her on, I do think it's ironic that the same people who think she shouldn't have been punished for her political views spent most of 2023 trying to punish people and the businesses who hired them because of their political views. It's almost like those people don't believe the things they say and hold other people to a different standard than they hold themselves. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.